So my sharing might be a little different from the rest of you, but if you know me, you would expect that. I'm going to recall gratitude as well. Mike Bickle, you changed my life. We've been friends for 46 years. And it is through you, the relationships, some of the key ones that in long term have shaped my life came as a direct result of knowing you, which would have been three seer prophets, Bob Jones, John Paul Jackson, and Paul Kane. I remember one of the first times that I um, saw Paul Kane minister. It was in Anaheim at the vineyard at a conference. And uh, yeah, I was a part of the prophetic ministry team and was doing an afternoon sessions with John Paul and they were calling out people, you know, because they saw fire on them. And dude, I didn't know how to throw hand grenades at people and hit them. But I did know how to like, if you stood in front of me, I could give you something. And then be in the back room with uh, Bob Jones and the anointing of Bob definitely amplified that which was upon mine. But what really got me was the strange silver-haired man that night. I wept. I wept, and I wept again when I heard and watched Paul Kane minister. I wept for two reasons. One, because I had already prayed for years to see another realm of the prophetic. And that night, I saw what I had been dreaming of. I wept for another reason. Because I went into an insecure place of comparing myself to him. And I started thinking about, oh, God, I just have little crummy words. Ah! That's my life. I wept out of the authentic realm of a higher dimension, and it was a dream come true. I wept out of a great need that I was pierced with to go deeper and higher. I tend to be a person who gets dreams and spiritual activity by assignment. On February 13th, early in the morning, I was caught up in a very vivid dream. I was in heaven. And heaven was dancing. All of heaven was dancing. Concentric circles doing Jewish grapevine dancing. And I was there too. And I'm watching these scores, no, hundreds, perhaps tens of thousands of people. And on an inner circle, going one direction, the next circle, twirling the other, another. And it appeared to me that all of heaven was celebrating. I peered into the dream, and I saw my two grandmothers, which I'd never seen. I knew they went to be with the Lord, but I'd never seen them together in a dream. But there was another woman that I noticed in the dream that I knew. Her name was Anna Kane. And she was dancing and celebrating before the Lord. There was another circle then that I noticed people in. It was my late wife, Michael Ann, holding hands with Jill Austin. And then another prophetic friend named David Dryling, and I was there with them. I thought I was in heaven, and I was totally healed, and I was perplexed when I woke up because I wasn't. <laughs> but it was amazing because I saw all of those people. Of course, I saw according to my frame of reference, but I saw I felt, I heard, and I asked a question in the dream, and I said, why 
is heaven celebrating? And it came to me. I heard a word in the dream and it said, oh, heaven is celebrating the reception of a king. Manifested presence of God was all over me. I wake up and I'm catapulted into a vision. And then I see these thousands of people dancing. I saw two golden chairs here and two golden chairs there. And there was Bob Jones sitting. There was John Paul Jackson sitting. Over here was Oral Roberts. And right there was Kenneth Hagin. And they were all watching the concentric circles of celebration and dance. And they were all nodding their head in approval. Yes, this is the right thing to do. I woke up out of the dream, went into the vision, and then I reached to my phone and I had a text from a man named Dan. I read the text and it read, Our friend, the Lord's servant, has just slipped beyond the veil. So I had that dream around 5 a.m. in the morning on the 13th of February. I'd also like to make an observation. John Paul Jackson was a seed put into the ground on 2-22-15, 2015. Paul Cain was a seed put into the ground on 2-22-2019. You cannot make this storyline up. Of the greatest seer prophets of modern Christendom became seeds fallen into the ground in order that we who remain can cross the great Jordan. And pick up the storyline so that it does not end. 